Good morning, guys. Um, um, Ralph Bain is a senior software engineer at Red Hat, works on uh, Fedora project as well, and he's going today to talk about uh, FedMask with you, uh, Ralph Bain. Can everybody hear me? Yeah? Uh, no? Really? You get now? Okay, I'm glad I asked so I didn't just go off into chat. Uh, I'm going to tell you today about that message and uh, uh, all about it. First, um, introduction as to what it is. It's um, uh, a Python API and library. It's a set of tools that we use around Fedora infrastructure to connect all of our web applications and services to one another uh, to you know, send messages about their activity back and forth. And uh, it, it's not originally my idea. Jesse Keating gave a talk back in 2009 at Linux Fest Northwest. Uh, talking about a message bus in general, not this particular implementation, but about how cool it would be to make our infrastructure more flexible uh, and capable. Uh, and so then many, many years later, we actually started development on it, and here we are at, at FedMessage now. Um, the, I mean, the real motivation for it is that, that Fedora infrastructure, like so many other uh, uh, installations, is kind of like a, a, an organic uh, piecemeal thing that's been built over time with uh, you know, multiple people contributing to it, people come and contribute, and then they leave. It's an open source project, so maybe that turnover rate is even even higher. So there's uh, there are things that communicate in really heterogeneous ways, in, in ways that I liken to a Rube Goldberg machine, right? Where you have these kind of insane process that kicks off the next thing that in an unexpected way then kicks off the next part of the process. All part of how like a package or a whole set of packages go together to become uh, Fedora. Um, Fed message, the you know, if you like break it down, it's like uh, it was Fedora messaging. Uh, we originally had that in the name, but in this last year, Debian has picked it up, and I just learned this weekend that Magia is picking it up too for their infrastructure. So, oops. Oh, my apologies. They are looking at it. Anyway. Um, but uh, so we've had to change the name uh, uh, so that we mean the federated message bus instead of Fedora to you know, be friendly to our, our friends in other distributions. Um, there's a Foxm talk uh, from last weekend about the Debian Fedora relationship on that, so you can go and, and, and see that video when it's posted. Uh, things that are unique about FedMessage, uh, perhaps the first is that it's uh, intended to be deployed in an open infrastructure. Uh, so uh, the consequence of that is that anybody can read the bus at any point, and if you're inside the infrastructure, anybody can write to the bus. Uh, and, but only messages that are signed with certificates from our certificate authority are actually trusted. Uh, so this is very useful for debugging. You know, n a novice apprentice sysadmin can come in, and to debug, they can go to one machine and spoof a message to see if it gets to the place it should get, uh, and so on. But uh, so things are not encrypted, but things are signed. Uh, in Fedora, you can see on the slide, we use X509 certificates for that, but FedMessage can also do GPG certificates uh, for signatures, um, which is contributed by the Debian uh, folks, and there's a, a seamless integration with, with their library for that. Uh, FedMessage itself is built on top of Zero MQ uh, instead of something else like ANTP or SOM, uh, and a nice feature of that that we get is that there's a, a no centralized broker in the infrastructure, and therefore no single point of failure as far as we can tell. In the, the top diagram here, you have uh, a depiction of the typical messaging scenario with a centralized broker, where you have um, some message producer, in our case, that would usually be a web service, like Bodhi or Fast or something like that. And when it wants to produce messages at startup, it'll connect to a broker and then begin publishing messages. The consumers on the other side would connect to the broker and begin consuming messages, things that are routed to them. The nightmare scenario is that you have a situation where your broker goes down, and then all of your web services are trying to start up, but they can't find the broker, and so they halt, waiting to, you know, for the broker to arrive. And now your whole infrastructure is, is, is busted and can't, can't get off the ground. With FedMessage, we have the, uh, what I call the, uh, the onus of initiation uh, is inverted, where the producer, when it starts up, instead of attempting to connect out to somewhere else and depend on something else, simply opens a port, binds, a, a binds to a port, and then consumers that want to consume messages connect directly there. So all of your producing services are decoupled, but the consuming services are looking for producers. Um, it's not a guaranteed side effect of this architecture, but what we also get with FedMessage is that the consuming services are also not bound to the producers. So if they attempt to start up and the producers are not there, they also uh, continue on uh, without problems. So if they have you know, a great number of, pr of, of producers they're connecting to, and some are missing, they'll still talk to the other ones that are available. Uh, this is a diagram. I, I'm not sure how legible it is from the audience, but it's the, the kind of grand overview of every service that's linked into FedMessage and then all the services that we have running in our infrastructure that are consuming FedMessage with some small things and touches. Um, but you can see on the left, uh, those are all the producers, and all the things on the right are consumers with that kind of artificially straight line in the center, meaning the bus. Um, 
at the bottom you can see things like uh, Bodhi and the Fedora account system and Tagger, all uh, libg processes running under Apache. Um, and at the top you can see things that are outside of our firewall, like Hopper, that live in the Fedora cloud uh, that need to connect through a firewall to uh, what we call the fed method relay, which effectively um, functions like a broker in that it takes messages from the outside and then forwards them on to the inside. Uh, but that's it's just exceptional in terms of the number of things that pass messages through that uh, point, which is furthermore proxied and has multiple connections and so on. Um, one of the problems that we encounter when we dispense with the broker uh, in fed messages is that we need a way to communicate about what services are actually available to each other. Um, so with a, with a broker, it's easy. You connect to the broker, begin publishing. You connect to the broker and begin consuming. There's only one thing that you really need to know about, so you can hard code that for all your applications, and that's fine, or put it in a config file. Um, with so many services, though, we needed a way to distribute information to consumers about what producers are available. And there were multiple strategies that we thought through. Uh, and the two that are implemented in FedMessage, as you can see at the bottom, are uh, excuse me, distributing a, a flat file that includes <coughs> a total list of endpoints. And so inside Fedora infrastructure, that's like we have about 500 uh, ports you know, on different machines spread all around that are producing producing stuff. Um, the other way that you can do it is uh, to use a, a DNS SRV record that contains that list of 500 things and then services can query that. Uh, we didn't um, do that initially because it was so experimental in the beginning and we didn't want to mess with an extra component we weren't sure about. So we dispensed with DNS and then later it was added as a feature. Fedora infrastructure just uses the flat file uh, approach and we push it out with Puppet and Lambda to all of our uh, consumers. Um, another aspect of dispensing with a broker is that you have the theoretical possibility of dropping messages, right? Because the broker's responsibility uh, is to, uh, you know, queue messages if a consumer can't consume them or to, you know, and vice versa. Um, but uh, we have done checks and tests that uh, indicate to us that we don't have any scenarios with drop messages. Uh, we have a script that we ran that checked all the list of crazy builds from the past week and then checked all the fed message messages from the past week and make sure that they lined up and that there were no discrepancies. And we ran that for a number of weeks. Uh, with no no discoveries of, of mismessage scenarios there. Um, beyond that, uh, FedMessage has the capability that the Debian folks um, uh, required, uh, which was to have the ability for the producer to have a local message store, which every time it published a message, it would put things in that, um, and which would do away with the theoretical possibility because you would have that list and they could replay them back over another socket. We had that implemented in FedMessage, but we don't use it in Fedora infrastructure because it comes with this really high overhead of every web service that you deploy has to not only have the database it normally uses, but then also a second database just to store its fed message metadata. And you know you have to have an, an extra socket for replay as well as your main your main repository. So uh, it gets really cumbersome in my opinion. Um, it's not actually unique to fed message as a technology, but in terms of our deployment, it's interesting that it is publicly subscribable. Uh, so you can actually use some Python or actually whatever language because you run C has bindings and, and whatever you'd like. Uh, to hit up this public endpoint and begin consuming messages from Fedora. Um, you can see, it, I had it typed up there, hub.fedoraproject.org port 9940. Uh, and then at the bottom, you can actually get the Debian fed message messages too uh, and have them sending both to your machine at the same time. Um, pretty neat. Uh, approximately the highest is uh, about five per second. I can show a graph at the end that uh, has our message security time. At, at times of um, like the, the, the mash process from Bodhi, there's a, a huge spike in Koji things as everything gets tagged into certain categories. But other than that, it's like around one a minute, you know, relatively slow. We'll, we'll see. Um, the full list of topics. Oh, did I just do this wrong? Yes, topics. Yep, messages. This is there's a full list of all the topics of everything that we produce at the FedMessage.com site. And here's a list of notable examples. Um, but instead of kind of going through and talking about each one, I want to, uh, <coughs> excuse me, um, <coughs> show this. Uh, this is a visualization of the fed message history for the past 30 days, starting, well, it's actually not for the last 30 days, but starting January 25th, so the last two weeks. Um, and the things in here, this is a tool that's typically used to visualize source code history, but we're not just looking at source code history here, we're looking at this transmogrification of the bus history into a git log. So things are here like the wiki edits and changes to package DB ACLs and people who participate in IRC meetings that are logged by Zobbot, our, our IRC bot. Um, all those things are shown through the kind of high level view of the vibrancy of the Fedora community and, and what's going on. There's a, on the previous slide, there's a link to the script that generates this video. 
so if you want to generate yourself at any time, you can you know, pick a time span, show me all of 2013, and it'll just rack through each of those. And neat little things show up, like someone goes on a tagging spree in Fedora Tagger, and like you know, a thousand lasers come out, and it's this big cloud. And it's pretty cool. Um, so sub message how to uh, actually use it. Uh, you can install it from yum. Um, with it, there's oh, unfortunately it's chopped off in the end. Uh, you can you can do two things with sub message. You can send messages and receive messages. So for sending, there's a command line tool called uh, Fedora or sub message logger that you can just type things to, and then it'll send it over the bus. And you can modify the topic and so on with the uh, arguments to it. Um, if you did this, say, on your own machine, it would publish it on your own machine, but no one is configured to actually listen to your machine, so it wouldn't go anywhere. So you would have to then stand up some streaming services to receive that. But that's the tool that we use in Fedora infrastructure uh, to um, sorry to do testing between different things. Uh, if you want to send messages from Python, the API is relatively simple. You simply import sub message and then run sub message publish a series of arguments. Uh, it has some nice convenience things like if you pass it any JSONifiable objects, they'll automatically you know, be JSONified by the library. And uh, furthermore, SQL Alchemy objects, which aren't by default JSONifiable, we have uh, utilities to inspect all their attributes and all their relations, and then create a nice JSON blob from them. So. Uh, for uh, <laughs> for looking at messages, you can run sub message tail, the, the feature component for sub message logger, uh, which has uh, many many options for displaying things in different formats. My favorite is dash dash really pretty, which is this nice pretty printed JSON, but with color uh, added to it. Uh, and so here you can see a message that comes from the Bodhi update system of someone commenting on an update. You can see that from the topic, which is in the, the I have a pointer. Yeah, the topic there, uh, bodhi.update.comment. So it kind of goes from the greater most noun to a smaller sub-object of that thing to then some sort of action or thing that occurred on it. Uh, yes? It depends on whatever is in your uh, sub message config. Um, by default, it connects to everything that's, that's available, right? So what we ship with the RPM uh, to Fedora users, it contains only one endpoint, and that's our public gateway. It's forwarding everything out. But inside our infrastructure, anything that's consuming actually does connect to every producer. So that's uh, an example of consuming me uh, messages from the command line, sub message uh, tail. Uh, consuming messages from Python is, is a very simple API. Uh, sub message tail messages is a generator that will yield messages for you. So you just actually throw it around somewhere. Uh, there's uh, a, a different facility also for consuming messages, which is this daemon framework that we ship that you may or may not want to use. We use it around. Uh, you may want to use your own stuff. But um, this uses um, the Python twisted framework. Uh, and it takes you can write a, a consumer, which is a plugin to what we call the FedMessage Hub. And when you start up the FedMessage Hub, it'll look for all consumers and find them and just insert them up and hand them messages. So <coughs> if you want to write something against the bus, this is a, a, you know, perhaps a good idea. Uh, for things that use FedMessage uh, right now, there's, there's a whole bunch of them, and there's some that I, I missed, and like new things that I learned each day that people are using it for that I, I don't quite know about or like forget to write down. And so they, they, they you know, get kept in that corner. Um, but David Aquilina, DWA, has a, the, was one of the first use cases, and he wrote something called Koji Stock, which just watches for successful Koji builds. And every time that one succ uh, 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 succeeds, every time one completes successfully uh, for the primary architectures, it will then go kick off a rebuild for the secondary architectures to see if we can snatch things up. So that you know, is, is a good thing. Uh, Herlo, Flint Savage wrote a tool called Fast to Track, which uh, he was uh, at, the, at the time um, uh, responsible for dealing with ambassador uh, track tickets, a new applicant to the ambassador program. And so he would watch for fed messages that come from Fast, showing that someone has applied for membership in a group. And then part of his workflow was to watch for that thing and then go and create a track ticket in the ambassador's track to say, who's going to sponsor this person, and, and so on and so on. So then he just wrote a tool that automatically you know, completes that workflow for him and then sends him emails at the end about you know, who, has, uh, who has created tickets where. Another application, Bill Peck, uh, wrote something uh, called Sub Message Download, um, which watches for uh, the compose process from release engineering. And every time that uh, a new compose is set up, he then takes it and downloads it internally for Red Hat to then be used for uh, testing in future uh, to watch for like rawhide uh, problems in rawhide with, uh, uh, with Fedora. 
uh, Luke Mack and L. Mackin wrote a really popular tool called uh, uh, Send Message and Notify, which is a daemon that runs on your desktop uh, and has integration with uh, GNOME uh, to show pop-ups in your desktop of just like the, the kind of fire hose of everything happening in, in Fedora. Um, so Pix, there's a GNOME shell extension that you can, you know, is kind of pretty and you can use to go in and tweak your settings. Uh, and the settings, you know, include every different kind of message topic that you can turn on and off and on and off. Say, I don't want to know anything from Bodhi, but everything about the ask bot, ask Fedora system, et cetera, you can do that here. And there's some advanced configurations where you can say, I want to follow users like Socio, Ralph, and Spot, uh, but, you know, and I want to know about the package NetHack and GNOME Shell. Um, a different kind of category of applications that are consuming the bus of things that we're starting to consider like a proper part of said message core uh, are the services like data, data Nomer and Data Grepper. Uh, and those two <laughs> those tools were conceived of by Ian Weller, a uh, Red Hat intern at the time, uh, was working on, on Fedora. Um, as something that just, uh, it's, the, it's the most simple rule. The consumer simply just every time it receives a message, it just puts it in a Postgre database for us to then query later. And then the publicly queryable interface that we have for that is Data Grepper, which is a HTTP JSON API. Uh, that you can, you know, find anything you want. So give me all the last 25 messages regarding this user, or give me all the last 200 messages regarding this package, and you know, all sorts of options for making these queries. Um, and we've been spending a, a lot of time the past few months building tools on top of Data Grepper that many of them don't have to actually do with the real-time aspect of said message, but have to do more with the unified stream of information that it provides. Uh, so Pingu uh, uh, Pierre, who's giving the talk in the uh, the, the one after this. Has been very busy writing tools against Data Grepper. Um, just a, a few of them here. There are many more. Uh, he wrote uh, Fedora News, which is an HTML5 mobile-ready app that simply represents the information from Data Grepper in a way that's that's useful for end users. So you can install it as a uh, an app on your phone and look for, you know, the history of Bodhi messages, the history of Bodhi messages, and so on. Planet is presented there as well. Um, uh, he also wrote a tool called This Week in Fedora, which is a cron job that runs I think each Sunday or each Monday, Monday morning. And uh, which looks at the data gripper history and then produces kind of a, a report of what happened last week. So who are the top five packages? Who are the top five of in this and that category? And then produces a graph over time of the activity in each different category. Um, yes. Provided by Fedora Infrastructure, and you go to uh, apps.fedoraproject.org slash data gripper. And the, it's the documentation page is there and so on. You just make it, it is hopefully self-explanatory. Uh, there's another tool, the owner changes report tool, which then goes and queries data grepper to look for all the packages that have been orphaned by somebody and all the packages that have been unorphaned by somebody, I think. Uh, not quite sure, but it produces a, a report to the dev list uh, also weekly if people come in and chime in on say, oh, I don't want that package, so go away, so I'll come find it and take ownership. Uh, and lastly, Fedora badges. <laughs> Thumbs up, yeah, you smile, you saw, this is good. Uh, Fedora badges is also driven by said message, so there's a, a daemon sitting in our infrastructure that listens to the bus. Every time an action uh, uh, comes across, then it'll compare it against a series of rules and the history from data and armor, and look to see, you know, who, should this candidate be awarded this badge or that badge for this certain kind of activity? No question? That's, I know. Uh, I'll, I'll give you a badge from badges.freebean.org. Um, notifications to your inbox. So this is the newest slide for this presentation because we just soft launched this application last week and it is a, a, a it, I mean it's kind of like Zimbra filters for said message. So you can go in and, and you know construct things and uh, construct filters and say I want things about packages that I own and blah blah blah. You know just some of the same stuff you've, you've, you've uh, seen before but we can do then notifications over different kinds of media. So we can send you emails uh, either in real time or as a digest. So we can send you private messages on on a on free node, so that's really useful for like watching your scratch builds when they complete. Even if you use it for that and nothing else, it's really nice to be able to tick off a bunch of scratch bugs and then see notifications, but only when they fail. And it's all you know. So yeah. Anything else to say about that? Yeah. Oh it, and it has this nice nice side effect for us that we have like a whole bunch of our applications send emails already. Like Cozy sends emails and Bodhi sends emails and package db sends way too many emails. Um, and we have this maintenance burden in Fedora infrastructure where every time we write a new app, we also have to write notifications code for it. So now that we have said message notifications, over time we'll go through and cull, <coughs> excuse me, all the notifications code from the existing apps and new ones don't have to have it. So it's a nice, nice thing for us. We can get, excuse me, you can get copper notifications and badges notifications, things that you can't actually get now. You can get with, with Fedora. Uh, 
uh, things for the future, the most exciting, I learned this weekend, is that Bugzilla messages are on the way in 2014. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hopefully in the next couple months we will be able to get that. And so that opens a ton of doors for tools that can be written against a, you know, Bodhi, Koji, Bugzilla workflow to, you know, do some sort of logic. Also really fun for badges because, like, there's a ton of work done in Bugzilla that doesn't get tracked by that one. And so that's a, a huge win. Yes, Ricky. Yeah, that's a real deal. Uh, also, in 2014, I mean, barring catastrophe, we're going to get mailman messages on said message. I see thumbs up and a hand that confirms. So we won't actually connect directly to Bugzilla ourselves, but there's a team inside Red Hat that is um, uh, working on a, a series of uh, filters and routes based on Apache Camel uh, that will be then exposing a message feed just for us that confirms any of that information. Yes? Uh, a set message message for every new email. Yeah, 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 just to confirm. Right. So, and that's with uh, pending mailman free. It has a really nice plugin architecture. The plugin's been written for a while. We just have to get to the point where we deploy it, it's hyper quick, and it's done. Oh, yes. Uh, all of it? Yeah. Yeah. So, we would try and contain only the metadata that is kind of most summary in said message messages. Uh, so the data won't explode. We won't have every content of every comment on every ticket, simply notifications that the ticket changed at this time and it had these flags, you know, five minutes ago, stuff like that. Had this happen. Yes. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, not the content. Yeah, it has not. We go back and check that. But uh, we, we've been running, we've been storing messages for a, a year and a quarter now and we have our database is 300 meg. It will grow over time. But uh, other cool future stuff, it's been in development since the summer, but Fedora Mobile uh, for Android is really cool. And you can install it and run it right now. And I do, and it's great. I check it every day to see the latest, like, said message. Oh, you know, someone just finished a build on Copper. And, you know, and then, you know, I don't know. Uh, at the grocery store checking out, and they're like, what? You know, my Bodhi update. No, mine is fine. Get out. But it, it's pretty cool, and it has all, it has it interfaces not just for said message. Sorry, I should clarify. So it it can now and has for a long time been able to query the, the history of said message and present that. But what's coming uh, in the next week or so is integration with that notifications application, so you can set up for really critical notifications, get them straight to your Android um, uh, device. Uh, furthermore, it can it, it can interface with like status.fedoraproject.org to tell you if the infrastructure is down or not. We update that page with when there's an outage uh, planned or not, and um, it can like look at the badges leaderboard and things like that. It's a, it's a really cool application. Fedoraproject.org slash mobile. Uh, other future stuff um, is this, this problem which uh, Release Engineering has put to us talking about pushing to the mirrors. Uh, right now we have over 200 mirrors and all of them uh, pull our infrastructure on some sort of hourly basis with our chance to look for new content. And oftentimes there is no new content so it's kind of wasteful. Other times we have new content available but nobody gets it for quite a long time. Um, so it was discussed in the past having um, an infrastructure to actually push the content directly to mirrors, uh, but understandably the sysadmins wouldn't want you know, us having access to their machines to do that. So uh, what we're thinking now is we can just have a small tool. Um, there's a part of SubMessage Core called SubMessage Trigger that takes a topic pattern and a command, and then every time it receives, it's like SubMessage Tail, every time it receives a message with that making that topic pattern, it then invokes the command, and we could have something that only then our chance will see as new content if, if that is available. The thing that's blocking this is uh, having said message messages coming from the Bodhi masher process, um, part of Relent that tells when new repos have been mashed and therefore new updates are available. Right now we have only new live images, uh, but not, sorry, not uh, uh, updates and commands. And there's a reason for that that we don't understand that has to do with Apache and threads. Uh, and you can look at the bug and if you can fix it for us, we can do it right now in Bodhi 1. Otherwise we're waiting for Bodhi 2, which is, is due soon. And with that, then we can do this. And this is better. Uh, other future stuff is Tasticron. Um, it's being worked on by the QA Devel team. Uh, Kitty Flink and Camilla Corral uh, are working on it. Uh, and it is going to be driven by SubMessage so that, you know, anytime any series of events arises, then they can trigger off series of tests that, you know, either compose different packages or test single packages and stuff. So it'll be pretty cool. Um, 
that is, in my opinion, a, a key piece of infrastructure for Fedora.net. Just being able to you know create all these different products and ensure that they have some degree of sanity um, uh, for them along the way. Um, if we can make it robust enough, then we can think about doing gating on Bodhi upgrades so that even if you know the uh, SE Linux policy uh, bug that came out, even if a number of people respond positively to it, I'm sure we can have robust enough automated tests that catch that, oh wow, yum update doesn't really capture this kind of attack. track like the, the project management process. We do have uh, publication for track. And uh, for people who don't know, it's, it's uh, selectively enabled. So we only enable it for uh, projects on Fedora hosted that ask for it. Um, so if you want it on your project, simply send you know, ping us and say, I'm going to turn it on. And lastly, I won't talk about it much because Pierre is going to talk about it in the next section. But we have uh, a cool project that's being worked on called uh, uh, Canoe Canoe Web. Uh, Canoe Canoe is the underlying tool that the system we use for release monitoring uh, wiki page, which is crazy that we all go and edit this wiki page as effectively a database of all the things that should be you know, monitored most soon. So we have a web application for it and ready, and it's going to be enabled as a sed method. And furthermore, it's going to be pushed outside of Fedora to be an interdistro uh, tool, uh, uh, int release monitoring.org. Um, so that would be really sweet. Think about upstream, you know, when they put out a new release, it then being pushed to all the different distributions for, for updating. So good stuff there. And so that is all I have for my presentation. Uh, if there's any further questions, I'll take them. Yeah, I just wanted to say that uh, I think it's really exciting that you guys are working on this and that you're excited about the fact that you're actually going to be able to use it in real time. Mm, that's a good question. So what are the <coughs> so uh, the way the way the mechanism works is if a message is uh, uh, published and, and someone receives it, they'll have to validate it, which involves going into Python code and, and looking at the X509 certificate and actually performing computation. So in that way, we would be vulnerable to a denial of service uh, if someone could get our consumers to listen to their publisher. So, but our consumers internally are only uh, organized to look at our own producers, so someone would have to hijack one of those uh, to create it. And for, like for instance, for externally, if uh, think of the situation on your desktop, if you're running sub message tail, someone would have to somehow get themselves in place of our public gateway to be able to push messages to you to you know, perform all that computation. There is, but it's limited by IP tables, so you'd have to get around that, which is possible, but I think it's safe. Yeah, right, from copper and the secondary rel engine and things. Yeah, there were proposals a long time ago to open it up to receive messages from all Fedora desktop users, uh, and the motivation was, this is crazy, to uh, um, uh, give badges for opening Firefox uh, 20 times. I know. <laughs> but good, good to know that is not the case. There's um yeah thank you. Uh, it, if we were to take messages more broadly from outside, um, you know which is actually the case that we intend to write, I, I will see where I find to uh, a bridge between said message and GitHub, so that when we push to GitHub, we can then get a notification for projects that, that enable it. Um, and so and so has pushed to Fedora infra slash said message slash GitHub. Um, but we wouldn't. I mean, GitHub has that whole webhook uh, scenario, this hub sub hubbub. And that seems to be a, a really good infrastructure for communicating between backend services. So uh, we would use that. And it would be easier to limit uh, DOS attacks with that because we have all the typical infrastructure in front of it, like HA proxy and Apache, that we know how to deal with things uh, for that. Any other questions? So Tacitron, uh, again, is in development, but it's a, a, a framework just for running generic tests and then storing them in a database. Um, so we'll use that to do all kinds of tasks. We're using Tinker 
uh, that is a, a, a trailer by Red Hat, um, to doing all sorts of other stuff, running RPM runs in, uh, in some really weird and special license stuff. I, I imagine there'll be a big fuss around the Apache client about store all those results, and then what we do with those results later is really that, but that's what's on the Apache side. And uh, I guess it also provides a, a, a framework for contributors to actually write tests. So this will come with hopefully some sort of combination uh, with diff git just a checkout of, of uh, package spec uh, so that contributors can write tests for their packages and so on. But you know, it's a little bit um, uncertain how that will work because we want people who aren't necessarily the package maintainer or package owner to be able to contribute tests for it. So maybe we create like a twisted git repo or like a sub-module and that's kind of the way it's going to behave. We, we do have such a thing, and it's a, a nagios check that wants data nami for each of the message types that it thought it could, it could process at the end. Um, it remembers your last message of this type, and if it's beyond some certain threshold, then it alerts. And that threshold is different for each message type. So for, uh, what's I mean, there's some ones that are just really rare that barely ever happen, and there's some that happen all the time. So koji is set to a very small threshold, but you know, suddenly koji messages stop, so that's going to be really long. Other things are like for the meat bot, I think it's a whole week because of things like vacations or all the meetings that people are in. We don't want to burn out, but it's going to happen. But we can add topic to that. It's on the list to add a number of things to it through the new source we have. Yes. Yes. And I often you'll see me in Fedora meeting going and pound start meeting test to make sure. <laughs> There is such a thing. Um, the, <coughs> excuse me, the package name is in the Bugzilla uh, ticket, and that corresponds directly to a Git repo that we have. Uh, and uh, for more complicated scenarios, we have Bodhi, the update system, where you could have an update that contains a series of packages that all address some series of bugs. And so with that complex mapping, you could map a number of bugs to a number of packages that are related in that. Um, it, it reminds me to say, though, that uh, an idea has come up to use uh, sub message integration with ABRT. Uh, so if you have a crash on your system, then ABRT catches it and then files a bug. And if we get bugzilla messages, then we can map that bug to a Bodhi update. So as soon as it is requested for testing, not even pushed to testing, we can notify users who would who would like to to say, there is you know this this new RPM that might fix your bugs. Do you want to try it? This is super scary. And then if they say yes, then they can do it, and then automatically pop up a window afterwards saying, did that fix your problem or not? Comma plus one or minus one, whatever new comment is being made. If there's no other questions, then we can move to the topic.